Welcome back, fellow armchair generals. This is Gamer1745 with my continuing playthrough of Hearts of Iron 3 Black Ice with lots of mods. We're going to continue this. If you haven't already, I know I say this almost every time, sometime during it. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. You can like it. You can like the video. You can post a comment. We love comments here. Okay, somebody stole our blueprints. Nav tactics advance. Uh, we're going to let those continue. And national decision. Yes. Form, form, and form. Don't hit those twice because I'm not going to read all of these. Those will have, I presume, yep, there they all are. Put that into the production queue. Okay, and build air bases for Western Germany. Yes, now these do. We need to come in here again. And to the top, to the top. Get our practicals up. Up with everything else. There go, a bunch of air bases just popped up out here. Some are just expanding, some are entirely fresh. Okay. Capital ship raiders. Is that a one and done? Um, yes, it's a one and done. Okay, and I think as we've lost, um, okay, we have a point two, so we're going to use the point two on something here in the navel tree because it'll go up and down as various effects happen and come on and come off, including um, you know, high popularity. Destroyer, escort, or uh, command your decision making. That's going to take longer time. So we'll get that rocking through. Just barely, but yeah. I guess the way I would deal with it. Um, Okay, we'll we'll risk things here. I want to talk a little game design philosophy. So if you want to jump ahead past basically this screen, um, you can do so. Um, if you just want to watch more gameplay and not hear me talk about how I would design the game. Um, I get where they're coming with leadership from with leadership. And it works okay. In Hearts of Iron 4, and I'm, I'm going to always be comparing these two games as long as I'm playing both of them, um, you know, you have more defined slots. Well, in essence, these are, you know, 52 slots, and you can reduce the number of research slots to increase the number of espionage agents, to diplomats, and officers. Yeah, I can see how these can all be pulling from, to some degree, the same pool of leadership within the nation. Uh, I get that. But I would separate them out. What I would do is have schools. I would, and I've often talked about the game that I've had before I've ever, ever heard, before, before they ever created um, Hearts of Iron, way back when I was still playing Third Reich, or when it got to advanced Third Reich even way back there designing a computer game in my head for some day and i still sort of have it there and yes hearts of iron has influenced what i would do i really hadn't thought of events quite honestly but i thought of schools and i would do schools and schools would be an element for it um element of the game nations would have schools and they would be 
Part of it would be somewhat abstracted kind of things like universities. But a lot of what I would be talking about would be, say, pilot training schools. That would be like, like a, a major, you know. So how many... And just because you just if it just build school button, you can spam it everywhere. Don't know quite how I would handle expansion of schools, either new or making, you know, schools bigger or whatever. But I would have schools. And one of the schools, one of the types of schools would be officers training schools. And uh, maybe like cause you have war colleges or whatever for higher level uh, officers that go back to, you know after you know it's like west point and then the army war college which you know you, you normally a captain or major or whatever to go go through that kind of thing um you know is to have officer training programs and then i would also just had um yes uh recruitable population but then i would have had um recruit training type schools that would just get your base guys into the navy basic you know number of recruit training schools for the navy for the air force for the um army and if you had special different things like not comparing them in any other way but um sort of special um subgroups like the marines or the ss the Waffen ss or whatever you know uh, other sort of recruit things so i don't know quite how i would handle all of that i have different possibilities in my head but um so i would have done schools for things like officers don't know how I would handle diplomacy, but um, maybe something more f even fixed based on, you know, nations, you know. Um, uh, Denmark is not going to have as much diplomatic influence, and that's probably what the term I would have used, uh, as Germany would have or the U.S. would have or whatever. So you have that. So research is, in essence, slots. And some of that whether it's schools or whatnot i would have way i would do do it would be um based on in which i've found some stuff would be like the navy the naval research and that would be you know so naval research and navy or however those sort of would be would just be the thing and some nations say like poland would have little or none of that just because they don't have a naval tradition, they're like Austria or Czechoslovakia, they're landlocked. It just wouldn't exist. And so the air, aeronautics, you know, which would be, you know, various, you know, uh, I'm thinking both hardware and software, or hardware and, you know, um, training procedures, you know, um, doctrines, if you will, you know, air doctrines versus, uh, you know, um, you know, propeller pitch or whatever that's one of, that's over here, you know, or a supercharger or some sort of technical things. Some would be technical and, and sort of divide it up like that so that, um, yeah, you look at sort of the historical um, settings. That's how I would do it. Um, and then slots. And have have some ability by putting a certain amount of resources into it, basically sort of building stuff, to um, expand some of the research labs, if you want to call them that, or um, other sort of like tank driver school. I know it can get sort of down into the weeds. And now my whole, one of my whole philosophies with um, political views in the government. I hate this because um, that just seemed to me a random event. If you want to have a political view in the government, which they very well could have it, base it on something histor historically, then, I'm, then I can work with that. I'd be happy. Uh, okay, so we're getting here. We're going to get the Sharnhorst, a couple of submarines, and I sort of went in and tweaked some of this in a little bit more detailed. So that's how I would have dealt with everything. Okay, I'm going to save this just to be on the safe side. There we go. Just so if it crashes, if many of my playing doesn't crash, but if it does or whatever, we will have to replay the whole thing to get to where we were.
Coastal Submarines class, class advanced. Okay, um, I guess that's a one and done. Yeah, and that leadership hit for the um, down for ten percent is really hurting us. And what else just got done? Oh, that one of those unpronounceable. German words. Oh, I might be able to pronounce it if I heard it pronounced slowly enough. Um, and be able to, you know, pronounce it something that a German would understand the word. Okay, uh, what was I wanting to look at? Oh, yeah, um, intelligence. Because we've had our blueprint. Okay, we have, we have maximum amount of spies coming in. Um, to, you know, internally, and we're also counter espionaging. As well, we still have ninety eight. Oh, I just thought this was such a cool picture, I had to make an event out of it. Um, FW Assman and Shun and Sons, but I just uh, there's the full sort of poster, um, on it, but just. That's an advertisement of Germany at this time. And yeah, okay. Um, would that be Ace Man in English? Um, translated, so it might not be quite the same. But that's only part of it. But just that, you know, that, what did I have? What I, now that you have joined the SS, you need a spiffy, spiffy uniform to have people properly fear you. Without that, why join the SS? Assman and Shuns can supply many of your uniform needs. So, and a bit of a commentary beyond just that advertisement. And I don't know specifically what um, they were selling. And this is sort of how it worked. Um, the insignia that were on this uniform were bought from um, licensed sources that since this is a party uniform, not a government uniform, though it is sort of a government uniform, but it's also a party uniform. So all the SS is sort of in the government, sort of the party, sort of, you know, okay, but it's a party uniform. Uh, RZM, and I think I have an event of it, um, is sort of a taxing situation. I forget exactly what the initials stand for. Um, probably Reich in there somewhere, but um, that the party... Yeah, you know, they had little paper tags on the back of a lot of these things that might be removed, but um, sometimes they're still supposed to be like under the color tabs. They're still supposed to be there. That prove that um, the seller and you or whatever bought something that paid its um, licensing commission royalties or whatever to the party. It was a way for the party. So when you bought your your uniform, um, you were giving money partially to the party. So this this um, uh, tailors that tailored uniforms would um, or would, would manufacture the uniform from approved types of cloth. There's different grades of it. Um, so this this would be a um, black jacket, brown shirt, black tie at this time, um, and so and later on that goes to white basically, but I think that's what, I think it's supposed to be brown at this time, at the time of this um, ad. And so, and this goes back to the time period before they're in power, but it continues all the way through to the end of the regime. And so they would buy the insignia from the proper source, but they would likely make, manufacture the hat. I mean, you know, make everything about that hat, except for, you know, get the cloth, get the, get the different materials that go into making the hat, but, but actually construct the hat. So, um, or construct the jacket. I mean, you know, start with just cloth, you know, whatever different types of cloth, because you have liners and you have different whatever, but starts with the cloth and not just like tailors as in um, uh, tweaks, say, pre-manufactured stuff. Now, they are, tr they are cranking out hats and um, jackets and these other things in mass production lines. That's what your standard sort of private would have. And officers, they did do officers' um, clothing as well. 
but you if you want higher quality maybe better tailoring maybe better construction nicer looking the army you can do this as well or the air force or you know the luftwaffe or the 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 um the navy you could buy especially as officers in a lot of these um companies or these are small shops in the sense of they probably have i don't know less than 100 people i'm pretty sure including you know guys in the in the back room or at the off-site facility making this it's not a huge operation these are smallish operations so this but it would be a shop in which let's say there's five or six people working at the counter or you know the, the counters in the shop taking your measurements but i don't know how many people depending on because some of them they might just be buying pre-made hats from another source and selling them there or they may be constructing the hat itself and different and collectors really get into all of this stuff in great detail. You know, it's not just that you have a particular model of SS hat, you have the different manufacturers. There's a point I'm going to get to all this, that's why I'm covering this right now. And so you have um, these sh different shops all over Germany. Uh, I don't know, there's a hundred of them, let's just say, I don't know the number, that make, um, significantly make portions of the uniform now like he's holding the belt here down here they may not make the belt that just may come they may have multiple styles they buy some there in the counter you need the belt here's we'll sell you the belt they'll, they'll like they'll boots probably you get because it's sort of a different fitted thing from somewhere else but you could probably walk in and buy the whole uniform but they may not be make tailoring their own shirts or their own ties i mean some of the stuff would just be um you know they have in stock to sell you from one or more sources potentially and so but they would be say making you know you'd be ordering they would fit you know um the jacket the hat the trousers or breeches or whatever he's wearing that type of stuff and sell you and a lot of this um now this has happened to be an ad that's focusing on the ss a lot of these um tailors um like i say would do all the uniform or all the uniforms all from all the major organizations so it would have you know the army the air force the the navy the waffen ss the sa um the standard nsdap party uniform um the hitler youth now this would be like the youth leaders the 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 adults for the hitler youth program so that they would have that um I don't, um, the uh, NSKK, the um, NSFK, the Flieger Corps version, all these major organizations, they would do all of them. And so one of these fairly small time um, companies that did this was Hugo Boss. Hugo Boss as an individual or as a company never designed a single thing to do with the SS or any Nazi party uniform ever. They never did. They were a small tailor making uniforms, including SS uniforms, absolutely. And um, I don't know whether they were higher quality than Ass Man and Sons or not, but that's the, the that's what Hugo Boss was doing. So if you ever see this, you know, SS uniforms designed by Hugo Boss, bullshit. Um, I don't know how hard it is to find something that truly is not a, a ripoff or, a, you know, a, a copy, you know, post-war manufactured or somebody trying to put a label onto a thing that might truly be identified as a Hugo Boss made uniform. But they were, and I don't know whether he was a Nazi or not. I don't know. I mean, I may have read something at some time at, he may have been in the party, but I'm not sure. There's the NSFK. Uh, he may have been a member of the party at some point. I'm not sure. But um, he was not a designer of SS or any Nazi party uniforms. Just a um, higher quality than the average sort of, you know, mass-produced uniform manufacturer. Okay, S superior strength has advanced. Okay, the National Socialist Flieger Corps was founded on the 15th of April, 1937, as a successor as a successor to the German Air Sports Association. General der Flieger Friedrich Christian is NSFK Corps Führer, which is sort of um, is not a um, like 
commander of a like an army corps, it just uh, there's a few of these corpse feuders that meaning he's in charge of the NSFK. He's the leader of all of the NSFK. And that looks like a naval uniform, so he's probably a naval pilot in World War One. Now let's look over here at um I think it's probably grayed out now. Um we're just done. Okay, yeah, we max drink that out. When we get to at least 39, we're going to start doing firepower focus, which will give one more brigade to divisions. I just, I have no love or dislike for Hugo Boss, but all this propaganda that we see out there, I just sort of want to fight that. Because it's just not real. Okay, we got that oil rig. Okay, Spain. Yeah, yes, you can have a little bit of energy. Heavy armor forging. Is advanced okay I think somebody else is stealing our blueprints is that over no that's industry okay 1942 far in advance so we'll stop that somebody stealing their blueprints okay good spies I guess because we have caught 28 spies and we have by our own spy priority is that Max and counter espionage is at max. Long, long time ago, back when I was rather young, I wanted to collect German military uniforms. I just got burned a few too many times on. Um, fakes and so I gave that up and I remember one of the last things I uh, brought to an expert yeah those are really nice fakes we just sort of glancing at them and so yeah that made me stop I have some stuff some very real stuff but that's why I, I collect guns because guns are not generally um, uh to to fake them um is more expensive than just the originals in many cases okay um in fall 1936 mayor of leipzig dr carl gol gol ladir oh, i'm butchering that um on a dis uh dispute over the statue came to a head after much argument he agreed to have the statue moved from its location in front of the Gerwand House Concert Hall to a less high-profile position. He left for a trip to Finland, promoted by the German Chamber of Commerce, and during this trip, the statue was demolished on Hank's orders. Um, he's, I think, the local Gauleiter. If I remember some of this correctly, maybe it says, okay, so he's a rather anti-Nazi um, mayor. And spoiler alert, he gets hung as part of the um, plot to um, assassinate Hitler. So he's that much of an anti-Nazi. So Marine classes have advanced. Very nice. Okay, we're still dealing with some of the... Oh, maybe we have... Okay, we have a little bit more. Um, Let's just save this.
very good. I'm just making sure I'm making more saves and not having it on auto save. Because trust me, if I was just playing on my own, I could get deep into this and, you know, I would have been reorganizing and we'll get to that. I'll probably make another organization special reorganizing the army. I've already done a teeny little bit, creating a few sort of useful cores over here. Um, yeah, okay, they're part of that core. Discrimination reports. So the Sudeutin Deutsches Partei um, draft a six laws for compulsory reporting of citizens of certain nationalities and their inclusion in the national register and create additional nas additional legal guarantees of nationalists, nationalities, say, living in the republic. Okay, so these are... Um, we're getting reports of what the SDP is doing in Czechoslovakia to cause trouble and claim to need protection, which eh, I don't know that they, well, the, the, the National Socialist elements needed protection because they were, oh, causing trouble. Did I mention that part? Let's see, let's develop along, I don't know, this river here. Rivers are, along with railways, are an important um, means of, um, okay, let's come here, of moving bulk goods and commodities. I guess it's sort of restating the same. No, goods are, are finished thing, commodities are like, coal and iron and steel or whatever were goods or like a steel helmet but yeah i'm um, moving that kind of stuff around so we are definitely continuing our industrial expansion while um starting to bring in other manufacturing okay well, yes you may have some energy we like selling our energy we have more than enough Okay, medium armored designs have advanced. That is good as well. And yes, we will now jump into heavy armor designs. And armored support choices. Okay, so I guess now that because we've done mobile support and we've done, and I didn't know, if, I don't know if I remember if this was either a thing before, I just forgot. I definitely knew about mobile support. And infantry support, um, you know, so armored support. I think I gave stugs to the um, mobile support. Um, maybe I shouldn't have. Maybe I should have just done it here. Now you choose four upgrades for your armored support brigades once chosen. Be the only attacks available to research. Each group can be selected only once. If you misclick or forget, okay, do not panic. Step back and start over again. Okay, so let's start okay we can do four i guess i always like to do the engineer upgrade because that's one of the more expensive ones if i'm going to not um add an engineer unit hmm. don't know how expensive these are going to be okay i guess recon Tempted to do assault guns again. I think, not sure, what you pick may, may affect the um, cost of the unit. Yeah, we'll do assault guns. That's three. I'm trying to have my fingers up here. And do we do artillery? Assault guns are sort of artillery. That's a um, that's not an assault gun. That's a um, uh, Yag Panzer. Hmm. 
Yeah, that would be anti-tank. Anti-tank upgrade. Hmm. That might have been the idea to do that instead of the assault gun. Yeah, I guess we're just going to go sort of normal and do. Yes, we could do want to redo everything. I don't know. Yeah, let's redo everything. Okay, we're going to do engineers. We're going to do reconnaissance. We're going to do anti-tank. Anti-tank, although that's an anti-aircraft gun. Okay. And then we're going to do artillery. Just because Stugs um, are sort of... Artillery, as it, as it were. And sort of anti-tank, but since we're also going to do artillery... I figured let's just do artillery and anti-tank. Get that higher piercing up. And where the stugs can be used as support vehicles for, um, oh, it's because we lost the whole 10% penalty, so we have a bunch more. Good. Um, Stugs can be good support for a um, just a motorized or non motorized infantry division or something like that. Yeah, we'll do that. And we'll do that. 52.1. Yes, okay. Um, if you're going to upgrade a if that's going to be used for, because of course we can attach it to anything, but if the armored support unit is going to upgrade an armored battalion formation, or even just a Panzer Grenadier, okay. Begin the Great Purges, okay, we've um, got low popularity, so we've lost medium, Yorktown is launched, Morgan Friedman is born, yes, I want to upgrade my armored support, yes, um, tank destroyer upgrade, Yes, now that, that looks like a reenactor's photo. That is uh, well, Martyr 3, not a Panzer. Okay, yes, we will do that as well. Okay, good. We are expanding. Um, it's, I checked before making this episode, it's 480, I think it is, ICs uh, adjusted you can have in 37 before you start getting any of the penalties. No, no money. Okay. Um, this is Deutsch Kraft Fart. Um, contains a lot of interesting NSKK um, information. It's, I presume, monthly. Um, oh, every two weeks. The periodicals published every two weeks and reached 125,000 copies by 1935. Presumably, continue to increase its circulation. So it's um, just helping spreading in information about mobility and potentially armed units and such. So get a little bonus there. Artillery focus right for the do rocket. Now we'll stick with the artillery. The rocket might have been an interesting one. I'm not sure how it would have rocket then paired with a um, regular artillery unit. Okay, something new for me here. Establish the Sicker Heinz und Hilfsdienst. Um, hopefully, I'm pronouncing it somewhat correctly. The Security and Assistance Service. Okay. Provide the organization mobile 
organized mobile civil defense strike force for the 106 towns of the first category regarding as most vulnerable to, I presume that means cities, but I don't know, um, as opposed to towns, to wartime air attacks in the German air raid. Protection organization structure established in the 4th of May, 1937. It evolved into a conscripted service established as a reserve occupation whose members were exempted from military service but were also not allowed to hold other employment SHD units. I've never really heard of this before, quite honestly. Um, SHD units were housed in barracks with a rotating s staffing pattern that allowed for half of the unit's personnel to sleep at home each night, call outs for attack permitting. So I think if your town's going to, you know, air, the bombers are heading in your way, I presume they'd be call you out. Um, SHD mission included firefighting, rebel clearance, sir urban search and rescue, building repair, emergency medical service, and the location and delivery of disaster supplies like the Reichsluftschutzbund and the British Air Raid precaution, uh, precaution personnel, unlike the United States Civil Service. SHD personnel were fully uniformed in a military style. Okay, yes, yeah, so I definitely know of the Reichsluftschutzbund Luftschutzbund, those are, um, uh, well, association of, or national um, association of air shooters, you know, um, it's a very crude um, uh, translation of those sort of four words or subwords. It's, yes, it's one word, but Germans do all these compound words. So basically, you know, um, flat gun helpers, if you will, um, that that is part of that and yes the British air raid in the United States um, the civil defense people um, wore basically a white um, Brody style or World War one style helmet I don't know whether they made more of them or just had we had so many in um, and those were mostly just issued on coastal um, areas just because, hey, no one was going to get to Kansas City, Missouri with any bombers, so you didn't need a civil service defense capability. Don't know if they had one there anyway, just to have one. I don't know, but you didn't need much. So it was a white painted helmet with um, sort of a little blue circle, red triangle or something like that with um, for that and an armband is what was the... Um, if you will, the uniform, not notice, weren't fully, yeah, they weren't fully uniform, but the uniform was a, a, a helmet and, a, and an armband. Okay, so civil defense gain, gain manpower. Cool. And so that goes, so I'm presuming at this stage, the way to talk about it, it's a, you know, um, part time kind of service in 1937. By mid war, those are, you know, full time personnel living in you know in hometown and not liable to be drafted for other things the hindenburg disaster spies must be spies everywhere okay forward work ag should we reach out to overseas industry industrialists to share our ideas henry ford is a strong anti-communist having our industry increase and our international trade expanded can help our nation Yes, so here, I know it says lose, but you actually get one more. I, I can't control that, um, what it says, when it says lose. But it will have a minus one if it's actually a negative. But in Cologne, you can expand this. This is actually the photo it was there in Cologne. Um, we can do that, which um, proves our relations with the U.S. a little bit. Automotive gain industry costs us some money because we're um, paying for stuff to go back to America. So really, up until the war is really sort of starting, you know, 1939, the U.S. is happy to be trading with Germany. I'm like, there, okay. Demonstration of the Ritter SA. Um, holds many demonstrations in the public. I don't know why these exactly popped up at the same time. Okay, this is similar but different. Um, uh, 
160 kilometers basically um, ride. It's a sort of a, this is unlike the public displays for the public. Obviously, the public may see this. They're doing various sort of cross country um, rides, competitions to improve training and prepare them for war. So they're sort of doing military exercises. There's a bunch of these going on, uh, you know, during the appropriate times of the year. Sort of, you know, I think they're mostly unarmed, um, just sort of, you know, how to go out in the field and with horses and travel rapidly and keep your horses fit. That's a very important element. You don't don't go ride your horses a lot. You got to work to keep them fit. Okay, to an engine prototype has advanced. Uh, okay, um, yeah, we'll stop that. That's too far in advance. Large caliber and machine gun turrets. Let's see if we want to do. Um, did I just hold on there at 38 and oh, machine gun turrets up here. Okay, well, I guess we'll start with the large caliber. So with all that essay, I just, I don't know, I've talked about this before, but I'm just trying to think, think of things to talk about while we're playing here. Um, the S, oh, there's all this stuff going on, and that's what I'm trying to show with the essay. It's sort of like um, the SHD, which I hadn't heard of before, that Revolver held at it. There's all these sort of preparations going on in these years that are getting ready for the war that are happening. Sometimes... Um, that SHD seems to be more of a police subcategory, where the SA is, of course, um, uh, the you know the party attempt and assassination of Marshal Rudolfo Gra Grazani. Okay, so then they butcher a bunch of Ethiopians because of it. Okay, I've always thought these are cool since I watched Logan's Heroes. Um, Mercedes Benz, the W31 was an attempt by um, Mercedes Benz, and there's actually four of them, they're all in one place, an attempt to um, make a um, sort of a super staff car for the the German army um, and sell a bunch of the German army. They end up not, I think they like, I don't know, I'm just going to throw out a number here, 60 or maybe is it like 30 of them? There's only a small number that were actually made. Um, that's actually a modern photo of one that was given to Franco that then the king of Spain sort of inherited. It is, it's kept in original condition. You can see there one is armed with a couple of machine guns for you know anti-aircraft or local defense. And so, yeah, they were sort of used as sort of prestige vehicles at times but you can also see that there are um you know cross country abilities those are that's actually sort of a uh, a step there that you can sort of step up in and out uh, without denting the bodywork um and so you can fill that with staff um, personnel so yeah the general may be there but you've got a bunch of lieutenants and other people that are writing that are doing the you know the, the sort of staff work seven seats very nice looking Fuhrer has ordered one for himself. So now you can do the historical thing, cost too much, and it does sort of, well, the more you make them, it does bring the cost down, but generally they figured that it costs too much. Um, but you can spend the money and the supplies and um, get uh, a gain, uh, you see the gain down there, you'll get a bonus and an industrial level of one. I can try up the supplies. It's almost a too free of an industrial capacity. But yeah, we'll go with that. Um, and what that does is there's a hidden tech in there that makes standard HQs, these sort of standard ones, just a little bit faster. I think we can... Um, um, that's maybe not a standard one that army hq model gain okay this is maybe because it's a the special core but if you just create a standard hq it'll go a little bit faster um, oh, okay okay trava mund um, seaplane base it's up here in 
Um, basically, we can expand that. Um, it was a, sort of an international airport, if you will, but also it becomes a um, uh, testing and development um, seaplane base. Yes, you're seeing the land portion of it, and you can sort of tell that these airplanes are don't have wheels, and they have um, little trolleys under them to wheel them onto the the ground, but it's all um, next to the coast there. So yes, and we will do that. Uh, yeah, um, oh, I guess it's come down here and it's put that up there. So that's just a couple of more factors of the airbase. Yeah, and yeah, it could handle standard aircraft as well. It should have a standard runway. Okay, I think we're going to end the episode here. I want to thank you all for watching. Thanks for liking the videos. If you've, like I say, not already, please subscribe. And of course, I really love hearing from you. Um, even just to say hi, know that you've made it this far. It really feeds the algorithm. It makes you want to do this more. If that isn't enough reasons, just, just make a comment, please. Thanks so much. See you next time for more Hearts of Iron.